is Sarah, or I go by Waterlily716, and today I'm going to do a video about identifying silicones and sulfates and what the importance of these ingredients in hair products is. Now, this is a very important for the curly girl method where you avoid both of these ingredients. Um, um, and I just sort of get a lot of questions about is this product CG? Um, or is this product curly girl approved? Does it have silicones or sulfates? So I wanted to make this video to help clarify what a curly girl approved product is and how to identify it because it's not that hard um, anyone can do it if they look up the ingredients online so um, first of all what is a sulfate? A sulfate is a foaming detergent that you find in lots of shampoos in dish detergent in like machine washes and it basically is really good at getting rid of oil and grease so it strips all of the oils from the hair. Some people don't like this because they think um, it strips too much oil and it's bad for your hair and your scalp. I'm part of that group. But some people say that you need sulfates for your hair to be clean. Oh, and sulfates, um, some general sulfates are sodium lauryl sulfate, um, ammonium lauryl sulfate, ammonium lauryl sulfate, sodium lauryl sulfate, and I will have a huge list of ingredients down below. Um, and then silicones come along and silicones are something that only sulfates can remove. So if you use silicone products, if you don't use a sulfate um, shampoo, then it's just going to build up on your hair. Um, silicones are a product that give the, gives the hair shine and it tames frizz and it protects it from heat. So it sounds like a great like miracle product. What's the problem? Well, you don't actually add anything to the health of the hair. They make the hair seem a little healthier, but they don't provide any like nutrients and they're not actually moisturizing. And if they build up on the hair, they can seal out moisture completely from the shaft. So for people that avoid sulfates, they automatically have to avoid silicones. And there are some similar things to silicones like mineral oil and other waxes that will also build up in the hair and sort of coat it that you have to avoid if you're going to avoid sulfates. And avoiding sulfates and shampoo generally because it's easiest to avoid sulfates if you just avoid shampoo. Sorry, my nose is cheap. Um, is not something that just curly haired people do, although I may maybe seem like that. Um, lots of wavy haired people do it, and even straight haired people. Um, even if you have oily hair, sometimes the oil is just a result of your scalp being cleansed and losing its oil so it keeps producing more oils. So that's something to think about um, with like the green natural movement. A lot of people are choosing not to use shampoo. Oh. And silicones will generally end in own, hexane, cone, conal, um, and then so some of those are amodimethicone, dimethicone, cycloplexane, um, and then there are some confusing ingredients that end in own but they are not silicones like benozophenone is a common sunscreen and like there is some common preservatives that end in own but aren't really, but aren't silicones. So I'll have those below as well. And something else you have to look out for, um, this kind of appointment, is alcohols. And there are moisturizing alcohols, which, don't ask me why, but they're just moisturizing and they're good for hair. There are drying alcohols, like isopropyl alcohol and denatured alcohol. And then there are moisturizing alcohols, like sedyl alcohol. Okay, list in the comments if you're getting confused. Um, so, and then, um, beyond that, there are proteins, and these are usually pretty easy to pick out in an ingredients list. Um, it's like soy protein, wheat protein, they're pretty easy to pick out because they usually say protein right in there. Now this is really good for damaged hair, and um, hair endures damage, it's part of hair's life, it gets damaged. So it does need protein because it's made out of keratin and it needs to be restored with the protein. But if you get too much protein, you can definitely get protein buildup. So. That's not good. But if you have damaged hair, your hair needs a lot of protein. And unless you have like protein sensitive hair, where your hair just reacts badly to the protein for some reason, um, your hair does need a little bit of protein in its diet, and it's like styling diet every once in a while. So um, that's just sort of a general overview of ingredients. 
that are important to think about in curly hair products or in products in general in hair products so how to find curly girl approved products now there's going to be time in your life when you're if you choose to do the curly girl method or if you just choose to avoid still fakes and silicones because I know a lot of people that are really interested in hair care even if they don't have curly hair try going like no poo and so um, there's going to be a time in your life when you have to go into the drugstore and you just need something. You need to buy something for your hair. So, as far as shampoos, you want to look for something without sulfates. And I'll have a list of gentle cleansers below. You want to look for the gentle cleansers like Cocomito Propyl Betaine. Um, if all of these ingredients are too much for you to remember, just print out a list and stick it in your wallet. Um, but you want to avoid like sodium lauryl sulfate, ammonium lauryl sulfate. So you avoid the harsh cleansing sulfates and you want gentle cleansers if you're looking for a shampoo. If you're looking for a conditioner, there aren't sulfates in conditioners usually. That's very strange. That makes it a shampoo by definition, usually. Um, so you want to look for a conditioner that doesn't have silicones. No modimethicone, no cycloplexane, um, no dimethicone. Now, with silicones, one thing I sort of forgot to mention is that there are water soluble silicones and a water soluble silicone usually has PEG hyphen than like the silicone. So PEG hyphen amodimethicone is water soluble and it'll wash out without a sulfate, which is good. So and then there are a couple that don't have PEG in front of them and I will have those listed below. I feel like I said that twenty times, sorry. So you wanna look for a conditioner that has no silicones, no waxes. Um, and then as far as styling products, you want to look for styling products that don't have silicones. So this is pretty easy. What you basically have to do is memorize the basic sulfates or memorize the basic silicones or print out a list of them. So, and um, it becomes like second nature after a while. It's like if you have a food allergy, like for me personally, I'm vegetarian. So I automatically scan the ingredients list of things before I eat them because random things like, for example, Lay's baked barbecue chips, but not the normal kind, have chicken flavoring in them, so I don't eat them. But I just learn to scan very quickly the ingredients list, and it's the same with hair products. I very quickly scan, and after a while you get pretty good at identifying whether something has silicones or sulfates in it. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, I know I'm kind of rehashing my Curly Girl Method video, but I was trying to make this geared toward um, more inclusively all types of hair, something like that. Um, if you have a question, definitely put it below. <clears throat> this is kind of like a crash course, like really fast. And I'll have some helpful links below um, and lots of information. So please check out the description or else this video is basically useless. Oh. So yeah, I hope I've cleared up some of the confusion because I get a lot of questions about this, about Curly Girl products. Um, maybe sometime in the future I will compile a list of products. So far I have not done that. Um, but yeah, I hope this was helpful you, for you and um, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye! <laughs>